Today's lesson is Chef Jose Andres changing the world one meal at a time. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger. And I'm Helen. And today we're going to talk about the world of cooking. There are lots of famous chefs out there, and today we're going to be focusing on one originally from Spain, and he's a chef by the name of Jose Andres, and he's trying to change the world one meal at a time. Yes, this chef is famous not only for being a very good chef, very good in the kitchen, for having put out cookbooks and started restaurants, but he has also done a lot to help people, especially people who are in need. And who's better to help people who are in need, who might be suffering from hunger, from a lack of basic needs, than a chef? Whose job is to provide food and nutrition to people? Are you a big fan of those chef shows on TV, Helen? I don't actually watch a lot of TV, so I'm actually not very familiar with Chef Jose Andres' cooking. But I do know that he has done a lot outside of the world of cooking of restaurants. So I'm quite interested in finding out more about him. Yep, we need to know more and more about cooking as、uh, supply lines for flour and stuff like that become limited and become stressed out because of wars and stuff like that. So it's a good idea to learn about chefs and how they're trying to change the world for the better. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson right now, and then we'll come back to discuss it. Chef Jose Andres. Changing the world one meal at a time. Humanitarian of the Year, National Humanities Medal winner, Nobel Peace Prize nominee. These are hardly the titles you might imagine for a celebrity chef, but 53-year-old Spanish-American restaurateur Jose Andres hasn't just built a food empire. He is making the world a better place one meal at a time. There are so many nominees this year, and I'm curious about who will get the award. 今年有多位提名者，我好奇谁会获奖。或是 All the nominees did a great job. It is hard to make a decision. 每位候选人都表现得很好，很难做出抉择。另外，补充这个字的动词。Nominate, N O M I N A T E. Nominate, 意思是提名或是指定。我们可以说 Kevin's colleagues nominated him to be the head of the party planning committee. Kevin 的同事提名他当派对策划小组的组长。或者 The panel of judges nominated twelve finalists for the film competition. 评审团在影片竞赛中。提名了十二位决赛入围者。So the title of today's lesson is Chef Jose Andres. Changing the world one meal at a time. So we're going to look at how this chef is actually changing the world, and there is a list of his accomplishments in the first sentence of the paragraph: Humanitarian of the Year, National Humanities Medal winner, Nobel Peace Prize nominee. These are hardly the titles you might imagine for a celebrity chef. So. Chef Jose Andres isn't only a chef; he is a celebrity chef. A celebrity is someone who is famous, someone who is famous particularly in entertainment, like actors or musicians or comedians, people who tell jokes, or in sports. So you would not say that a politician who is famous is a celebrity. We're mainly talking about entertainers and people who are famous for other reasons. So. Jose Andres is a celebrity chef. 
and he has already been nominated or chosen for these awards and titles. So to be chosen for something means you have become the nominee of something. A nominee is somebody who has been officially suggested for a prize or a job. Interesting way to begin this article here. We're listing all of his awards: Humanitarian of the Year, National Humanities Medal winner, Nobel Peace Prize nominee. Wow, these are hardly the titles you might imagine for a celebrity chef. Indeed, I find it kind of difficult to imagine a celebrity chef winning all these awards. Basically, I think of them as being really good chefs who've got TV shows, but you don't think of them winning awards, maybe cooking contests and stuff like that. But these are pretty cool awards here. Humanitarian of the Year. That means you're a really great person. You care about humanity. And of course, National Humanities Medal is somebody who cares about people as well. And we all know what the Nobel Peace Prize is. He didn't win it, but he was nominated. And again, if you're nominated for something, you are the nominee, or you are a nominee. And again, these are titles that you might not expect that a celebrity chef would have. Yes, but 53-year-old Spanish American restaurateur. Jose Andres hasn't just built a food empire; he is making the world a better place one meal at a time. So we're referring to Chef Jose Andres as a restaurateur. Now, this is a word in English that comes from French, and it basically refers to somebody who owns or manages a restaurant, somebody whose job is to run a restaurant, and that's what Jose Andres does. Besides being a celebrity. Chef. He has also opened many restaurants, and that's why we say that he has built a food empire. Exactly. So, of course, he's a great chef. He's a restaurateur, which means he owns a lot of restaurants. He owns and operates them. But he hasn't just built that food empire. He's also trying to help the rest of the world with his efforts at making food, not just for you know celebrities who want to pay a lot of money for a special meal, but he's also helping out the regular guys out there like you and me. Okay, let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen to it first, and then we'll come back to discuss it. Spanish-born Andres fell in love with cooking as a child, and began studying at a culinary school in Barcelona at 15. He then worked at a restaurant opened by his friend, now world-renowned chef Ferran Adria. After being unexpectedly fired, Andres decided to start afresh in the U.S. At 21, he arrived in New York City with just $50 to his name, and began cooking at a popular Spanish restaurant in Manhattan. Culinary, 指烹饪的或是厨房的。举例来说 ，The cookbook was written by a culinary expert. 这本食谱是由一位烹饪专家撰写的。或是 ，We spent the afternoon sampling a variety of culinary delights. 我们一下午都在试吃各种美味佳肴。So now we're going to look a little bit at Chef Jose Andres' background. Spanish-born Andres fell in love with cooking as a child and began studying at a culinary school in Barcelona at 15. So at 15 years of age. Andres began studying cooking. He went to a culinary school. The word culinary here means relating to food and the cooking of food. So he went to a school that specialized in teaching young kids how to cook. He went there. Started school when he was fifteen, and the school was in Barcelona, in Spain. Exactly. So culinary means having to do with the kitchen. That's its Latin origin. It just means kitchen in Latin. So he went to a cooking school, basically, in Barcelona at the age of fifteen. Barcelona, of course, is a city in eastern Spain. It's got that、uh, famous church there. And he then worked at a restaurant opened by his friend. 
Ferran Adria. Okay, so of course we've got another famous chef here, Ferran Adria, and he's a world-renowned chef. So if you are renowned, that means you are well known, you are famous, and if you're famous all over the world, we can describe you as being world-renowned. He is a world-renowned chef. He is famous all over the world. Yes, you can also say a world-renowned artist. Banksy is a world-renowned street artist, or Beyonce is a renowned musician singer. So here, this chef, his name is Ferran Adria, a friend of Andres, is a world-renowned chef. After being unexpectedly fired, Andres decided to start afresh in the U.S. So Andres was in Barcelona and he was working at the restaurant of his friend. But suddenly, unexpectedly, he got fired. He didn't know he was going to get fired. So he decided, well, I've had it with Barcelona. I'm going to start afresh, meaning I'm going to start new. In another place, so he decided to go to the United States. Exactly. So he decided to start afresh, and at 21, at the age of 21, he arrived in New York City with just fifty dollars to his name, and began cooking at a popular Spanish restaurant in Manhattan. Okay, so again, he was only 21 years old, and he got to New York City, but he only had fifty dollars in his pocket. If you have something to your Your name, you own that. So basically, it just means he only had fifty dollars, and luckily he got a job at a Spanish restaurant that was famous in Manhattan, and that, of course, is the most famous part of New York City. It's where all the big buildings are and where all the expensive restaurants are. Yes, and this phrase to his name is most often paired with a small amount of money. So you wouldn't really say, "I only have this car to my name." You could say that, but when you say, "I only have twenty dollars to my name," it's just to stress the fact that I don't have a lot of money, or I started a project with very little money, so I had to work really hard and depend on good fortune. Well, that's pretty. Pretty risky there, going to New York with just fifty dollars. If I wanted to move to New York, I'd have to show up there with at least ten thousand dollars in order to get started. Maybe he had some friends he could stay with, or something like that. Okay, and the rest, of course, is history. He became famous after that, but we're going to continue talking about his life and times in the final paragraph. So let's listen to it first. By 2003, Andres had opened Mini Bar, an exclusive countertop dining space serving avant-garde dishes that earned two Michelin stars. Since then, Andres has built up a culinary empire consisting of 28 restaurants, four cookbooks, and a line of food products. Despite all his success, Andres yearned to do more. He began volunteering for DC Central Kitchen. An organization that feeds the hungry and provides job creation and training. Andres liked the idea so much that he wanted to expand it to a global scale. The third part, we see the word countertop. This word is a noun, meaning the kitchen of the office. For example, the kitchen in the new house is designed with higher countertops. For taller people, 新房子中的厨房为高个子设计较高的琉璃台台面。或是 ，the countertop is made of marble. 这个工作台面是由大理石制成的。另外，把 countertop 字尾的 top 去掉，就变成了名词 counter， 表示琉璃台或是工作台。我们可以说。There isn't enough counter space in our kitchen to cook, so we usually eat out. 我们厨房没有足够的琉璃台空间可以烹调，所以我们通常在外面吃。也可以说 ，everything you need to make the cake is sitting on the kitchen counter. 你做蛋糕需要的所有东西都在厨房琉璃台上。最后，我们看到动词 yearn 表示渴望、渴求或是向往，像是。I yearn to experience that same excitement again. 我渴望再次体验那股相同的兴奋感。或是 ，What Isabella really yearned for was a quiet place where nobody would bother her. 
。Isabella 真正向往的是没有人会叨扰她的静谧之地。So when he was 21, Andres went to New York City with just fifty dollars to his name. But by 2003, Andres had opened Mini Bar, an exclusive countertop dining space serving avant-garde dishes that earned two Michelin stars. So after a few years, Andres opened his own place, and the place was called Mini Bar. And this place was a very particular kind of restaurant because it was an exclusive. Exclusive countertop dining space. Now, exclusive here means two things. It could mean that it's very expensive, or it could mean that it's available only to a limited number of people. But usually, these two meanings go together because if something is really expensive, then only few people can afford it. So, in that sense, this restaurant mini bar was very exclusive. Indeed. So again, this is actually a countertop restaurant, which is not your traditional restaurant in which you go in, you find a table, you sit down, and a waiter comes over and takes your order. In this particular case, a countertop restaurant is an open restaurant where you sit at a counter that actually faces the kitchen, so you can watch the chefs cooking and things like that. I guess it's similar to teppanyaki restaurants, but not exactly the same. And this, of course. Is an exclusive restaurant, so of course you're going to have to have a lot of money to go in there to eat. And of course, if it's a countertop restaurant, seating is going to be limited, so you might have to have reservations or connections. And in this particular case, the mini bar served. Avant-garde dishes, and he even got two Michelin stars. If something's avant-garde, it's kind of very different. It's kind of radical. You don't see it normally when you go in there. Of course, you're going to be ordering food that you've never had before. Yes, and the restaurant also won two Michelin stars. So Michelin stars, they belong to a guide called the Michelin Guide, and it's a form of rating of restaurants. So the most that you can get is three stars, and getting two stars is quite an accomplishment because not many restaurants around the world are able to get even one star. Exactly. So they're avant-garde dishes. They're kind of experimental and exquisite. And since then, Andres has built up a culinary empire consisting of 28 restaurants, four cookbooks, and a line of food products. So of course he got to be quite successful after then. Uh, of course, at the beginning he opened Mini Bar, and word spread about his talents. So he expanded, and now he、uh, has 28 restaurants, or at least he had as many as 28 restaurants. And yes, we're talking about his culinary empire, which consists. Or it is consisting of various things like restaurants, cookbooks, etc. So here we've got the verb to consist of. Yes, often used with the preposition of, and that means that basically it contains all of these things. You could say the empire includes 28 restaurants, four cookbooks, and a line of food products. Yes, and if you want to ask what a particular dish has as its ingredients, the person responding might say, "Well, this dish consists of fish and eggs and vegetables." So that's another example of the use of the phrase to consist of. So Andres has built up a culinary empire consisting of restaurants, cookbooks, and also many food products. But despite all his success, Andres. Yearn to do more, and here the word yearn simply means to want, to desire very much. But it's a strong type of desire. You can say that you yearn for a chance to go to France one day. You really want to go to France. Exactly. So he yearned to do more. Of course, he was quite successful. He could have rested on his laurels, but of course, he saw a larger purpose in his life. Yes, indeed, he wanted to do more. He yearned to do that. He began volunteering for DC. Central Kitchen, 
an organization that feeds the hungry and provides job creation and training. So, of course, if you volunteer, you work for free, and this, of course, is something you can consider doing when you retire. You can volunteer. You can work at libraries or hospitals and feel useful to society. My father volunteered after he retired for many, many years and is still doing so. And in this particular case, he began volunteering for this kitchen, and it's an organization that helps feed hungry people, and also creates jobs for people, and also trains them for jobs. So that's a great purpose in his life. Yes, and Andres liked the idea so much that he wanted to expand it to a global scale. So after volunteering at DC Central Kitchen, he realized that it was a great place. It was a great idea to have a place that could both feed people and also provide them with the skills and training so that they can get their own jobs, so that they can make money and buy food and have a decent living. So Andres liked the idea so much that he decided to. To expand it, he wanted to make it available to people around the world. Indeed, so Jose Andres indeed is a profound individual who is a successful chef and entrepreneur and restaurateur, and he's also helping out the world as best he can, one meal at a time. So, because of those great accomplishments, we're going to talk some more about him next time. Join us then. But right now, we need to stop talking and turn things over to Hanny. Hello,同学,大家好,我是Hanny,我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第三部分的第一句提到,到了2003年,安德烈斯开设了Mini Bar, 那它原本是一个法语词 第一个补充的是state of the art 好这个片语原本是指某项科技的目前进步水准用来表达最新发展最高层次那么中间常常可以加上连字号把它变成形容词state of the art 可以形容是最先进的使用最先进技术的那这个复合形容词呢就常用来描述设备啊科技科学等等像我们可以说state of the art medical equipment 用来表达最先进的医疗设备 第二个补充的是cutting edge 它表示尖端最前线或是领先阶段其实它原本是指锐利的刀锋或者是刀刃部位那么后来用来比喻走在最前线最先进的事物我们其实可以用 at the cutting edge of 点点点 或者是on the cutting edge of 点点点 去表达在什么什么呢 居于领先的地位好那接着你可以在 cutting 和 edge 之间加上连字号把它构成形容词 cutting edge 就可以形容是尖端的最先进的或是领先优势的像我们说 cutting edge technology 就可以表达尖端科技那我们接着读到课文第三部分最后一句好那这边用到的句型是 so 加上形容词或副词加上 that 子句去表达非常点点点以至于点点点或是如此点点点结果怎么样怎么样那这个句型当中的 so 是副词用来强调它后方的形容词或副词所描述的特性说明某事物它的程度啊高到造成某个结果而 that 子句就是用来表达结果例如 
The boy laughed so hard that he fell off the chair. 那个男孩笑得很用力，结果从椅子上跌下来喽。好，那另外我们也可以用 such 点点点加上 that 子句去表达如此怎么样，以至于怎么样，非常怎么样，所以怎么样。好，那特别注意 such 之后是接名词哦。如果是个单数可数名词，我们会用的句型是 such a 或 an 加上形容词，再加单数。不可数名词。那如果它是个复数名词或是不可数名词，这个句型就会是 such 加上形容词，再加复数可数名词或不可数名词。那之后我们再搭配 that 子句。好，举例来说 ，It was such a beautiful day that we decided to go picnicking. 天气非常好，所以我们决定去野餐。好，那么以上今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Nominee: The Democratic Party has just announced its presidential nominee. Celebrity: The celebrity wore dark sunglasses and a hat to avoid being recognized. Culinary: You can take cooking courses if you want to improve your culinary skills. Renowned: This city is renowned for its cafes and restaurants. Exclusive: Perry attends an exclusive private school in New York. Yearn. Emerson yearned for the long, lazy summers of his childhood. Volunteer. Wendy volunteers at an animal shelter twice a month. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoyed reading along with us. I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you next time. time.